uh, I could say it's probably 30, 20 to 30 percent of the practice. Um, <coughs> very, very common actually. We, uh, we manage to see this in, in different forms. It can uh, occur right at the bottom of the heel. It can occur in the arch. Uh, it also kind of goes hand in hand with Achilles tendonitis, which is um, you know, more uh, toward the back of the, the heel uh, where the Achilles tendon inserts down into the bottom of the foot. Um, they actually go, uh, go kind of hand in hand. Uh, and it's a very common, uh, very common problem that we see. Uh, thank you for the treatment for my cough. You're, you're welcome. This is your partner, Dr. Ron Martin. Dr. Martin. Uh, that's that. Th you can tell this is semi-live TV. That was not planned. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, plantar fasciitis, a buzzword. You know, every specialty has their, let's say, their primary conditions. You treat a lot of things. Uh, we had mentioned with Dr. Ron earlier. You know, the foot is a relatively small anatomical part, if you will, but complex. the whole body, but extremely complex. Well, let's talk about that right now. Let's talk about when feet problems start. Feet problems are very complicated. There's a whole profession just on feet. Let's talk about, you know, very briefly, uh, one of the reasons why, and it looks like there's a lot of different bones there. There's 26, 28 if you count the tiny two little sesamoid bones underneath the great toe that some people uh, don't consider uh, bones uh, to be counted, but you know, depending on who you ask, there's either 26 or 28, a couple hundred ligaments and uh, a bunch of tendons, and uh, it's a very complex structure. Um, Hard to duplicate that. It no. is, it is. It's, uh, you know, however you believe that uh, we got here uh, and how we formed. The, the foot uh, is a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting uh, structure, yeah, very the, analogous to the hand and wrist, really kind of complex. And the blueprint, blueprint of the body was uh, being formulated. Absolutely. I'm sure this one took a little a bit longer maybe than some other areas. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And it, it gets us around, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of steps uh, in, our, in our lifetime, millions, you know, occasionally. Let's show on, on the model for, you know, our good friend John with the bunion. Let's, let's just real quick kind of show what you would do, let's say, uh, with the joint itself, maybe just the location. Yeah, this, uh, this, the bunion, yes, this bone is the first metatarsal bone, which is straight in this model, but in John, it's, it's kind of angled this way. And this is the actual portion of the bunion that becomes prominent on the inside of the shoe. Um, Typically what we do is we make, uh, we, we take a saw in surgery and we make saw cuts in the bone, um, basically cutting it from side to side in a V-shaped fashion. And if this uh, bone is moved over this way, we actually uh, separate the front from the back, locate it, kind of move it over, and then fix it with, uh, with screws or plates. Uh, we have some nifty toys that we get to play with in surgery sometimes and, and hold it in position uh, for the required amount of healing. Uh, you know, for, for a relatively small area, I, you know, I've learned over the years by talking to patients and people uh, that bunion surgery is not, it, it's not a simple thing. I mean, there's a lot of recovery that has to occur. You're there is. foot for a while. There is, yeah. Uh, are people surprised when they come in for that, you know, that, they, they, that the aftercare is it's not just, you know, putting your shoe on and let's go home. They are. They are. You know, most people, when they think about feet, they stick them in a shoe and, and they're there. They don't think about them very much. But um, bunion surgery can be, very, can be very complex. It depends, once again, on, uh, as I was showing with John, how large the angle is. But when the angle gets a little larger, uh, larger uh, uh, period of, uh, longer, I should say, period of non-weight bearing is required after surgery, um, the uh, types of fixation that we need to use, uh, mainly plus and, uh, screws and plates, get to be a little more uh, intricate. And uh, people, most people, when you tell them about the recovery from bunion surgery, they, they don't expect that amount of time to be off their foot. But if, if done correctly, uh, and we, we like to think here that we do a, a pretty nice bunion, we have very good outcomes here, um, you can keep someone in a very minimal amount of discomfort and, uh, and uh, hopefully get them back into walking and into thinner shoes a little bit, uh, a little bit faster, get them back to function. Uh, very briefly, uh, we're going to go into a, another room here in this beautiful building, actually, in your office in particular. Thank you. And, and talk about, uh, you know, the uh, a, a new, not technique, but a new technology that you have here at your disposal uh, for, you know, what it's used for and, and, you know, very briefly talk about, uh, you know, how it's used and, and why it's so efficient and what it's doing. There. Yeah, we, we, we actually have a new technique here that we're using. We're fortunate to be able to uh, offer something called uh, platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, uh, uh, to our patients. And uh, on the subject of plantar fasciitis, if the traditional therapy does not work for plantar fasciitis, be it cortisone injections, orthotics for shoes, all of which we do here in which we start out, um, before, a lot of times we would, you know, a little bit earlier in the treatment have to go to surgery because we'd run out of options. Well, there is this step now um, 
which is very novel. It's being used by orthopedic physicians like Dr. Cervoni and the guys downstairs for hips, knees, shoulders. We're using it in the foot and ankle for plantar fasciitis, for Achilles tendons. Um, it involves drawing uh, a patient's blood, about 30 to 40 cc's, less than would be for a, a blood donation, spinning down the platelet part of the blood or the more solid part of the blood, and then re-injecting those platelets, which have a huge amount of anti-inflammatory property and healing potential, back into an area that's inflamed. And we're getting great results in keeping people out of plantar fasciitis surgery with that technique. And it's very simple. We do it right here in the office. It takes about a half hour. Would it be like, uh, you know, platelets, aren't they using the clotting mechanism or healing? So you're almost like doing a, uh, a super satura saturation. Absolutely. Well. You're taking something that works and just putting a lot more of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. The platelets are the first cells that come to the area when there's a, a cut, uh, a typical cut on, on someone. But now that, uh, you know, science has gotten uh, it's so amazing, they've studied these platelets and found substances inside these platelets that have a significant amount of healing potential. So we're... Uh, because in a normal blood draw, um, you know, they're kind of only swimming around. We're, we're taking out a larger amount of blood, 40 cc's, spinning it down in a centrifuge, which we have here in the office. We're coming up with about three to four cc's of platelet-packed plasma and re-injecting that platelet-rich or PRP back into the foot, ankle, or for other docs, shoulder, hip, knee, and it's doing a great job. How about this platelet packed or power packed? Absolutely, PPP. Yes, and I appreciate Dr. Tony Giordano. Thank you very Shelby, much. Shelby Foot and Ankle. Shelby Foot and Ankle. Um, I, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate Dr. Ron Martin. Let me rehab my cough here Absolutely. with this uh, beautiful water. It tastes pretty good over here, too. And for Dr. Anthony Giordano, I'm Mark Gullius. Thanks for being with us on 30 Minutes to Better Health.